<clears throat> okay. Podcast, Snafu Podcast number one with Myra Miller and Joey Van Meesen. Welcome, Myra. How are you doing? Great. How great. are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. I have some things written down about you. I'm going to uh -oh. say them. I'm going to, I actually have to still introduce you. Because um, you're Myra Miller. Myra Miller, PhD, it says right there. We also call you <laughs> Dr. Miller. She is the hardest working woman in St. Louis, Missouri. She's the owner of Footsteps Researchers, and she doesn't know the difference between uploading and downloading. <laughs> Her nickname is Myra the Scar Miller. <laughs> Welcome, Myra. So How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, this is the first podcast of Snafu, Snafu Podcast. And uh, we're going to talk about you. You are the owner of Footsteps Researchers. We're going to talk about your interest in World War II, um, the plan for this show in the future is to talk with a lot of people about their interests of World War II. Um, this show is sponsored by Footsteps Researchers. You are the, the, the first ever sponsor of, of, this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of this podcast. I'm the guinea pig, right? You, you, you are. You are. Um, tell a little bit about yourself and Footsteps Researchers and what you do. Well, I think that what's interesting is that uh, I knew nothing about what my father did in World War II until 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, here I am, a grown woman. My father died when I was uh, 19, back in 1980. So I didn't have, I didn't really pay attention. I didn't really know what he did as far as anything about World War II. And one day I was... Um, watching a documentary and it occurred to me that I didn't know anything. And so I asked my brothers, my brothers knew some things, but they didn't know everything. And that started me on a, uh, it, 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 it just was a transformation up to where I am today, trying to help other people follow their fathers or grandfathers or uncles footsteps in, in, in the women of the war. Uh, because it was so exciting and so powerful once I did figure out how to do the research and how to figure out where he did, where he was, what he did. All right. So where do you do that? Where, where do you research? Well, um, I did not realize that living in St. Louis, Missouri was a huge deal until my brothers and I went on a footsteps tour to Europe to to see where our father did fight and everybody in Europe was like you live in St. Louis you live in St. Louis oh my gosh you live in St. Louis I'm like yeah <laughs> well guess what the archives are in St. Louis the NARA uh, NARA National Archives where the personnel records the IDPFs the personnel right. forms, the morning reports for all of World War II are housed in St. Louis. Right. I, re I remember our common friend, Bob Konings, the first time he put me in touch with you. Uh -huh. And I was like, can I, can I, can I have some records? I, I and I remember you like, but I don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> that was... And I said, well, let me see. What can we do? How about you help me and I help you? And then I could get you some records. Right. And that's how uh that's how this all started that's how that's how i got to know about st louis <laughs> yes it's uh, not very many people know that that's where the uh so i go in person and mm -hmm. joey you've been there you've been there you were there in february yes and unfortunately job. it's closed right now due to the uh pandemic but um it's it's a it's fabulous to go find the records and then put the pieces together and help people figure out where their World War II soldier was. So 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 what does footstep researchers do? What like how do people approach you and what what like what do they ask? How how does how about the process? Uh most of the time they don't know anything and they're like, what can you get for me? And they don't even know about the personnel files. The personnel files, unfortunately, in 1973 there was a fire at the archives and the the really misnomer about the whole thing is that not all the records were burned mm -hmm. some of them were mm -hmm. and since then they have been replacing uh reconstructing files or preserving the files that were damaged 
And uh, most of the time I'm, I'm getting uh, anywhere from a very small record to a very large record. And it's called OMPFs, uh, Official Military Personnel Files. So those are, those are there, those are what people ask for. Another big thing people ask for are the uh, Individual Deceased Persons File, mm -hmm. IDPF. Um, that's another situation only A through L are available at the archives in St. Louis. Uh, they say that pretty soon M through Z will be there. Right. But right now, those are for people who were killed in action or died while in service. Those were not burned because they were not there at the time of the fire. So they're available. Right. And that helps people identify. Uh, uh, we help a lot of grave adopters, people looking for their soldier or trying to identify what happened to somebody who was killed in action. Yeah. So, so the IDPF tells a lot about the individual and how he died, I guess. Yes. Uh, well, I know, it, it'll, but... it, it has the whole process of when the, uh, sometimes where he, where they were killed, uh, their wounds, right. uh, burials. That is what and, I think is the most really fascinating. Not. You can really see the process of what happened to the body as soon as he mm -hmm. was officially buried. So mm -hmm. you'll see the contact with the family. you see. Oh, uh, that's what's so exciting is the reading the letters back and forth from the family members. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, various states of distress, not knowing. And, and we're not talking, you got to remember that they, these were letters many months apart. And sometimes it took years for them to find out where the body was and get it back or repatriated mm -hmm. or decide whether to, to stay a lot of people wanted um uh, chose to keep the body in uh europe with the the men that he died with they died with hmm. yeah i so think that's, that's an exciting uh part of the archives or the idps right i think it's very valuable information to any mm -hmm. researcher out there that is studying a battle to you know I, sometimes there's secret there that's like you you never know what's in the file, right? You never know right. what's in there. So no, never. And so sometimes somebody will say to me, uh, "Oh, I got told that the file was burned up." Well, I go and pull the file, and it's got maybe twelve, fifteen pieces of paper in it. It has been reconstructed, and there's something, right. and that's that's amazing. And also the the Navy files are complete. They were not at the archives when it burned too. So Navy and Marine files are there. Mm -hmm. And they have photos. That is, oh my God, oh, yeah. I, they have photos. In <laughs> and uh, I take a picture of them. Then I come home and I uh, do a Photoshop uh, inversion of the negative right. and have a really clister, uh, crystal clear photo of the of the photo of the that is, soldier. That is amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. I um, I. Like seeing that photographs makes it so much more and the dog tags sometimes personal. Dog tags. Oh yeah. Right. That's I had I had tags. I had like five when I was there. Right, right. In in, in February. That was crazy. I, I particularly like the letters. I, I can see writing back and forth. Uh I I just we you and I worked on this uh the, the plane crash, the king size plane crash. And one of the first moments that I realized that I could actually do some really good was when Bob Konings asked us to help. And I, uh, I've pulled all the files for several different B-24s that crashed on D, uh, December 25th of 44. Right. So, so and, what, what was that about? How, what, did, what happened? Uh, this plane crashed, uh, this, uh, why Bob Konings was involved is because this six year old little boy who was now in his eighties had all of his life wanted to know what happened to the people on that plane that crashed that he saw crash. He was in that village and he huh. saw this, he saw two parachutes coming out uh -huh. and he saw the plane crash. And then all of his life, he's like, I wonder what happened to those people. Did they live? Right. You know, what, what went on? And well, we ended up finding the file, the files of the men and we found out seven died and two survived. That's crazy. And going through those files, I mean, I had goosebumps as I was going through them, like, oh, my God, we, we found the plane. We found this is the crew. Right. So that was very exciting. What, what is one of besides that? What is one of the 
I mean, I don't think there's a there's all always a, there's always cool and fun stuff. Sometimes there's like sort of shocking stuff that you come across. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, one of the files had the uh, the morgue photos in them. The, oh. the guy photos of him being of dead. Wow. Yeah, the morgue. I was like, oh my gosh! And did, several several shots of this guy. Did the family because, request those? No, it was because there was a. I think the guy it was. I think there was a fight that he, you know, it was an internal wow. fight. They were. It was a identification trying to figure out what happened to him. Wow. He didn't die in battle. Wow. Yeah. That's weird. That was, um, you know, like I said, the dog tags, um service records when you get a complete service record in there and you can just see everything that i mean the, their own handwriting and what was stamped and stamped and those are pretty cool right one other gem i th think that is in there in the archives in st louis is already morning reports mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know they exist or they have no idea what it is i have a i have, the, I have a the idea that a lot of people just know about the after action reports Mm-hmm. Those are at College Park. Right. In Maryland. Yeah. But I th that's what I, that's my, like the general idea that I have about mo like people that starting to get into research is that they only think there are more, there are after action reports, but morning reports is something different. It's like a, it's like the end like a, like a whole, um, a daily log of, of down to the company level of every unit. Right. Well, that's why we that's why we named ourselves footsteps researchers because it is exactly how you can figure out the footsteps of your your soldier is as long as you you can go either forwards or backwards as long as you have a date or a unit and and you can start you can find the name and go forwards or backwards and really come up with the footsteps right that's it's unbelievable how how well because kept it everywhere. Is. I don't know if you can show one on the screen, uh, but um, like my dad's morning reports, um, it shows him coming on July 21st, mm -hmm. two miles south of Saint Denis, France. Well, when I first was trying to research all of this, I knew I was talking to Ben uh, Glenn Nightingale, who was from uh, an English guy uh, has a house in France. And I was trying to figure out where my dad landed or where he started the war. And this morning report gave me the exact date with his name on it and the exact location with the coordinates. Wow. And I was talking to Glenn Nightingale he, and I asked him where he lived. And he says, I live two miles south of St. Denis, France. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and I'm crazy. like, you got to be kidding me. So, yes, now my lifelong friend who uh, my father was basically in his backyard uh when he joined the war right that's crazy I'm, I'm showing on screen now the morning report of okay. july 21st yes the 44 and it shows uh you can see all oh. the names those were the enlisted men that well, came you, in myron h miller isn't it yes seven three seven i mean three seven three eight three one five two right seven four five is his mos he's a rifleman perhaps yes. first class he was a there's normally there's another part of this morning report. It's on the next page, but we, I don't think it's attached right here. No. There's a one for December 17th, and there's a, another one for on August 1st. August it shows 1st. Where, yeah, he was promoted to a PFC on August 1st. That probably was because they lost a lot of guys in July through the hedgerows, uh -huh. and so they promoted yeah. him. He was I older. He was like 26 at the time. There he is, uh, Myron Miller. So, so morning reports show, uh, they show a lot of information. Hmm. And the, the the best part is when you see one with a coordinate on there, and then you can really get down to the the point where they were. That is crazy. Must have and, been a real shocker when you when you found his name on there. Oh, oh yeah. I, I go to the uh, where he was wounded in action. So he made it all the way to the Hurtkin Forest on December 16th. He was wounded. I have a snap and, here. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. And if you'll, uh, there's a, a closer up one and shows the exact location where he was and it shows another guy. Well, my dad told my brothers that uh, when he was wounded, the guy that was with him in the foxhole was killed. Wow. Well, 
we figured out that there was only one guy that day in his company that was killed and it has to be this guy. Wow. So we, I, I pulled the file on him and did the whole entire research on Joe Emmett, who was my dad's sergeant. Joseph who, Emmett. He yes. says here that he was seriously wounded. But he died three days later. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, I think that's, is that, no, that's not this one. That's crazy. He died three days later. I don't have a morning report of that. Yeah, he was he was wounded. Oh, then it's not on there. It's probably in the hospital file, in the hospital record, or is it on the morning report as well that he's dead? Yeah, it's on the hospital records. I, nice. The one I have there is my dad's. But yeah, I found uh, Joe Emmett uh, dying three days later in the hospital. Wow. So so did your dad ever tell you anything about the war? Not me. Not me. But never, my brother. Never ever. Never. Wow. That's why I didn't know it. Not my sister either. Wow. So, so this is why uh, there's a lot of daddy's girls out there like me. Um, Koi Ackerman, she was she was a daddy's girl. She we took her on a tour to Belgium, uh, footsteps tour. And there's just something about you know not knowing and then finding all this information out. It just is it, kind of it's kind of a priceless emotional. Thing. Right. I, I, you just feel connected now because so, I think I think most people don't know what unit your dad was in. Did you mention that? Uh, he was a uh, company K of the 331st Regiment Infantry Regiment of the 83rd Infantry Division. 83rd Infantry Division. Yeah. So they are uh, they're the ones that came. Um, they came. They landed on June 18th, 23rd. I'm sorry, June 23rd. But mm -hmm. my dad wasn't with them yet because he was a replacement. Right. So what happened was they were. They lost a lot of guys in the hedgerows and they pulled him in to replace a lot of those guys on the 21st that had, there was a big battle on the July 4th, mm -hmm. July 10th, a lot of, a lot of people lost. And so he came in on the 21st and wow. he, he made it all the way to Germany till Herkin and got wounded. And then we found him. I don't have the morning report right here, but he came back in April to the same unit. And I have heard that that's unusual that wow. they get to do that. So he's in the hospital in England for three months. We found the hospital. Wow. So we we know where he, um, Willem Doms, he's uh, our, our expert in the Hurricane Forest. He took me and my brothers to the trench line of that morning of the 16th right. of where that company would have been and where he would have been wounded. Wow. And then he put me into the hospital that he would have been taken to. And yeah, I've traveled his whole footsteps several times. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. So he, he was wounded right before the Battle of the Bulge. On the first day. <laughs> 16th. Yeah. The right. morning of the 16th. Yeah. He just he just wasn't like he wasn't where the Battle of the Bulge. He, they just missed out. Yeah. Well, yeah, he missed the cold weather, but he right. came back in April right before the end of the war. And huh. then he became a, after the war was over, then they switched from infantryman to a police, uh, military police. Wow. Yeah. And he stayed till November. November 45? Yeah, until he had enough points to go back home. Yeah. I see. Like, man, wow, that's wonderful. And I didn't know any of this until I taught myself to research at the archives with all this information. I mean, you can do things on ancestry and you can find things you know, but right. the real stuff is, is there, both at St. Louis and College Park, Maryland. Yeah. If you want answers, then I think the archives is where you have to go. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, thank you for sharing this. I ask, also ask you before go, coming on this podcast to, to bring some items with you yes. that has a, that are connected to you to your story or that, mm -hmm. you, that you think that have a great story. I have a really great story. This is my favorite item. Uh, this is in a box. I'm going to take it out. It's very delicate. Wow. It is a map. It's uh, let me open it up here. And it's called. It's um, at the end of the war. All the guys got one of these. It's kind of like a commemorative map of where they were. So I'm going to open this very carefully okay. so I don't tear it up. Don't do it. And the really cool thing about this is when my brothers and I went to. Europe to follow the footsteps. I was talking to Antoine Noslier in uh, Brittany area of France, and he was the one that we were going to meet, and he was going to show us where our father was mm -hmm. in uh, Saint Malo in that fight. Because uh, in that fight, my father told my brothers he had pulled a, 
a buddy out of the street who had been hit by a sniper. Wow. And so Antoine took us there and everything. So in, in looking up where my our father had been, he went to his files and he found that he five years before we arrived, he had bought this map on eBay. Mm -hmm. And as he was studying our trip mm -hmm. to meet us with, he opened up this map and he contacted me. He said, where, where is your father from? And I, and I said, Dixon, Missouri. And he's like, you won't believe this, <laughs> but I happen to have your father's signature on a map. This is no kidding. Wow. So, so there's just the map that apparently there's 11 signatures on. Antoine had it in his files. Wow. We showed up, we showed up at his house. Now let me get it up here. And right here is my father's signature. Wow. Is that it? Yeah. Wait. Can you see it? So wait. No, that's a Michigan. I, I think there's a guy from Michigan. Oh, here we go. I'm getting there. Oh yeah, there. There you go. Wow. Wow. Can you believe that? That is crazy. So my brother and I showed up in Antoine's kitchen. He had this map laid out and we couldn't believe it. That is crazy. And of all things, Antoine gave us the map after he had had it for five years. He had no idea that he would ever meet us. He just bought it randomly. What a coincidence. <laughs> it's <laughs> that it's is crazy. I think that is the craziest items uh, like item story that I have ever I know, heard I mean, of. What are the chances of him having this? Right. Are there's only eleven signatures on this? How many guys are in a division? Like ten thousand. Yeah, and he had my dad's map. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, that that's our favorite one. Wow. And um, this is a piece of shrapnel made into a cross by the mayor of Guy, Germany. My dad was wounded in Kufferoth, which was just a mile or two away from Guy, Germany. Mm -hmm. It was a huge battle the eighty third went through. And my dad was wounded by shrapnel. So this is a, this came from the area. Wow. To a cross and the mayor gave that handed this to me uh, when we visited. Mm -hmm. So this is very special to me. Wow. And then this is a billfold. Well, why <laughs> is it so special? It's kind of cool. Um, my dad was um, older when he went to war. And when he came back home, he had a little brother who was five years old. And back then you didn't have cell phones to say, hey, I'm coming. You know, you just, <laughs> you arrive <laughs> on the train and you show up. And uh, he came into Jefferson Barracks, which is, which is in St. Louis. And Dixon is like two hours away. But my, his family lived near the, the uh, train station mm -hmm. in Dixon. So he jumped on the train and came home and in the middle of the night. And his five-year-old little brother woke up and knew his, and his brother had come home from the war. <laughs> you know, he'd right. been gone for, since he was little. And uh, he came down and I kind of get choked up. Um, That's okay. He said that uh, he was so enamored with my father. My father was telling stories to his parents and he was sitting at his knee and, his, and my dad pulled out his billfold and handed it to him and said, here, this is yours. And he wow. carried it through, throughout the whole war and gave it to, and from that point on, uh, he's my uncle, I guess, carried this billfold all the rest of his life because it was my dad's. Wow. So I have that. <laughs> he's, I guess he's not alive anymore, your uncle? No, no. Okay, so that's why you have it now? Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So those are my three special things, but the map, the map's amazing. My. I think my brothers all teared up and cried and we called my sister and seen my dad. Is that, is that your dad, dad in the back over there? Yes, my mom. Um, yes, my mom drew this picture of my dad. Wow. Uh, when he passed away in 1980, so she drew that. And um, that's him in the frame when he uh, came back from the war. And then our soldier stories book is my family and I put together in memory of him uh, about 150 different stories of men and women, nice. ordinary men and women who would have uh, never had a story told about them. I see. That is wonderful. Yeah, I think I'm uh, I'm going to talk to your sister later on for the podcast because I want to talk about soldier stories, of course. Right. That's crazy. I, that map story, but like it, it blows my mind every time I hear it. Right. There's not. Yeah. 
if you go out on eBay or whatever, I mean, there's a chance of you finding a name on an item. There's a chance, there's maybe a smaller chance of finding the family, but having the family come to you <laughs> and say, hey, can you guide me around? And you look at your, your own collection, I'm like, I actually have this guy, like an, an, an item that has the name of this guy on it. It's, I know, it was, I think it, to be honest with you, I think it was actually meant to be type of situation because who, in, I mean, right? Every, the whole process of, of starting Footsteps Researchers, you know, you and I joining, you know, coming together, doing all this stuff. Um, it's been the most amazing, the best time of my life uh we helping have, people it's just wonderful we've been doing crazy stuff together <laughs> <laughs> we've been all over the place well you you mostly yes i've been to uh i've taken several tours um i lead uh people from here in very small groups over to europe to follow footsteps and uh we're, we're, we're excited about our new uh, let's move forward with battlefield tours and uh, some other things. Mm -hmm. uh, so, must uh, must give you like a like a, a feeling of like a fulfillment of helping other people, like you know, uh, finding more about their past. Is like, I tell you, that's one of the when I can find something for somebody. Uh, I've had men say, uh, "I'm in tears right now because I found something about their father." You know, um, mm -hmm. and, and there's so many. Well, uh, well, what was it? Uh, Liz, who we took back to, uh, uh, to Normandy, where to see where her father was killed in the Jeep. Okay, yeah. On July 10th. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she never knew where her her father had actually died. And so we took her to the exact spot, and, and her she had nine members of her family with her. And that was so gratifying that we were able to help her put some closure she was two years old when her father died wow for her to go back with the rest of her family and see where this happened was phenomenal it was it was very emotional yeah i remember seeing that the was it the Faber family yes mm -hmm. yeah that's crazy lieutenant colonel Faber. he was killed on july 10th of 44 in saint denis wow wonderful so stories honestly it's like tons of stories <laughs> like because um, i went to the archives and i had like okay i had this whole list of guys that i researched and every time you open a file it's like here's another person here's another person with a mom and dad maybe a kid sometimes and it's like and then of course i had pulled a lot of the idpfs of the guys that were killed so that's even it's crazy too right but at the same time it's so beautiful to help people or to research something uh, and that's one thing we do with our nonprofit. We have a legacy lost and found nonprofit. I, I really feel like it's important that the people who adopt the graves, the Europeans that adopt American soldier graves and take care of them, mm -hmm. and they really take care of them. <laughs> they go visit, they put flowers, they, they, they take it very seriously. Um, through legacy lost and found, we, we help those European uh, ad grave adopters with files when we can do that. When we have the funds, we do that. You have, them, you have them for free? Yes. So you yeah, have because, for free? Yeah. yeah, why would I would never charge somebody who was taking care of our graves. But, you know, it's a it's a nonprofit. So we, we do get funding to help us with that. Hmm. Um, but that's that's an important thing. And we also try to return relics that have names on them back to the family. If I I, I'm, I'm telling you what, this being returned to me and our family meant is a priceless, priceless thing. Uh, you, you, you and uh, Sarah and I returned a dog tag to Maine in February. The, the family, it, it, there's just nothing like it. Right. It's, it's so, so we do lots of things. That's why it amazes me that when you go to these expos, military fairs, or look on eBay, you find all these named items by by somehow people that have sold the items of out of their family like they're it's, it's a family heirloom so how, how could you sell something like that something i don't, don't, that much I don't know oh, i mean we have our dad's uh, i don't know if you have a picture of it we have our dad's dog tag my brother has the his awards and his dog tag mm -hmm. 
I would never ever get rid of that. I right. mean, I think I do have them. Actually, you get you you send them to me. Let me open them up for you. But yeah, there seeing koi when we took her to the spots that she'd always wanted to know where her father was mm -hmm. and seeing her face that was so gratifying it's hard it's hard to explain so i have the purple heart on here combat infantry badge robert doug the 83rd patch the eighth in, in, uh, armored division patch i guess he went home with them yes because uh back then so the 83rd uh disbanded i think in october they had a big part that's where i think he signed the map Okay. And then, um, because of point system, he had to wait, and he went home with a different group because of the point system. All right. Wow. They all didn't go back home together. Conduct medal. Very nice. Thank you so much for sharing. We are already on our thirty-minute limit. Uh, I only have thirty minutes. We are at thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Thank you so much for telling your story of Footsteps Researchers. And, uh, you know, people can find you at footstepsresearchers.com and yep. they can they can research their relatives. Unfortunately, the archives are closed right now. Until we're, still doing, we're doing what we can right now. Uh, we're putting people in queues and we're, we're still taking projects, but uh, we're ready to go as soon as the door is open. All right. All right. So thank you, people, for watching Snafu Podcast. Episode one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.